Pradedam. Labas rytas, visi susirinkę į Lietuvos aplinkos saugos veiksmingų vertinimo pristatymą. Good morning, welcome to the presentation of the OECD Environmental Performance Review of Lithuania. So this review was carried out by the OECD. It is the first review of Lithuania, although the OECD has been carrying out such reviews for 30 years, but it's the first time for Lithuania. So we are going to hear a presentation. We will also have a discussion on the 43 recommendations, we'll try to touch upon the main aspects. But uh, before that, I would like to invite uh, Prime Minister of Lithuania, Ms. Angrida Shimonita, to say a few introductory remarks. Uh, Secretary General of the OECD, Minister for the Environment, colleagues, the environmentalists. Today, we are having a, an important debut meeting, uh, just like uh, many other colleagues in other EU member states and all over the world. We are ready to start moving in the direction of uh, the Green Deal. But when it comes to the environment, uh, we need to look at the actual situation, we need to agree on the objectives and then decide which measures will allow us to reach that objective objective in the most effective way. The OECD and the review carried out by the OECD shows uh, the environmental performance of Lithuania and it is a very important starting point in assessing and uh, planning future work. How can we define, describe the Lithuanian environmental sector today? I think that uh, this sector in Lithuania is moderately progressive and ambitious enough. We can be happy, well, we can be happy that we are among the member states who have uh, achieved the greatest reductions in CO2 emissions. We also have one of the most effective uh, uh, system, the collateral system in the EU and uh, among uh, the OECD countries. Uh, we have also um, uh, achieved uh, one of the sustainable development targets. But of course, we have a lot of problems that need to be admitted. Only half of our water bodies are in good environmental position. The transport sector, um, when it comes to the pollution, is below the EU average, and we still use too many, too much uh, fertilizers. The OECD review that will be presented today gives a short overview of Lithuanian policy measures, their effectiveness, and provides recommendations that are very valuable. I'm very happy to say that these recommendations are fully in line with the current government program, and uh, we can also speak about the synergy of those recommendations and the implementation of the government program. Uh, the government program contains ambitious and specific te steps aimed at reducing pollution, promoting circular uh, economy, integrating solar power plants, and renewing the transport sector. And these are only a few of the measures uh, that we can also see um, in uh, the recommendations that will be presented today. I would also like to emphasize several measures that might be might seem uh, limited in scope but uh, uh, should have uh, significant impact. Well, the vehicle fleet in Lithuania is rather old and we are lagging behind the EU average. We need to renew this fleet and we need to develop an incentive system. Uh, for that purpose, we're developing a common ticket system, uh, the renewal, we're renewing the public transport fleet and implementing other sectoral programs, and um, uh, we will thus contribute to the uh, renewal of one of the most polluting sectors. Mineral, mineral fertilizers that are still being used in agriculture uh, have a negative, a very harmful, harmful impact on Lithuanian uh, water bodies. 
Well, we are now facing a situation when we are uh, prohibiting the use of certain organic fertilizers, but we are allowing the use of um, mineral fertilizers. Well, the crisis had an impact on our renovation, building renovation processes, but uh, we are not going to stop. We will continue this program, we'll uh, adapt uh, renewable resources and we'll include uh, people and municipalities more. And uh, fast digitalization will also contribute to the achievement of the objectives of the government program. I would also like to emphasize uh, our close and very warm cooperation with uh, the General Secretariat of the OECD. We discussed this before this event. This cooperation allows us to exchange information quickly, to consult one another and to look for the best solutions for Lithuania by using the experience um, that um, um, have been accumulated by other countries of the OECD. Dear participants, I wish you an inspiring and um, interesting discu discussion in order to ensure good environmental condition and implementing and in implementing one of the main objectives of the Green Deal, that is to leave no one behind. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Prime Minister. I will now give the floor to the uh, Secretary General of the OECD, Mr. Matthias Korman. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, dear uh, Prime Minister uh, Shimoni Tai, um, Minister Gent Vilas, uh, colleagues, it's a real pleasure to be here today to present the first ever OECD environmental performance review of Lithuania. Uh, this report with its 43 recommendations was prepared by an OECD team which included experts from the Secretariat but also two reviewing uh, countries, Latvia and Ireland, as well as an expert from the International Transport Forum. Uh, I would like to very much thank the Lithuanian Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Transport and Communications for their valuable engagement and excellent collaboration throughout this process. In the period since 2005, Lithuania has made significant progress in improving the environmental efficiency of its economic growth. For example, the emissions intensity of the Lithuanian economy has fallen significantly other environmental pressures have also reduced as a proportion of GDP. Indeed, while the Lithuanian GDP has risen by 50% since 2005, environmental pressures such as greenhouse gas and other air pollutant emissions, uh, municipal waste generation, energy and water obstructions have all remained stable or declined. Between 2005 and 2018, energy supply from renewable sources has also more than doubled to around 22%. But uh, more can and must be done. And we commend uh, the Lithuanian government for its initiative in seeking this advice that we are providing today on what more can and should be done. Uh, Lithuania has declared ambitious medium and long-term climate change mitigation goals, including a net zero emissions target for 2050. But if we, are able, if we are to turn these commitments into outcomes in a cost-effective, economically responsible and publicly supported way, Lithuania, like other countries around the world, will need to pursue further policy reforms. So I would like to highlight just a few major areas where more efforts are needed specifically uh, here in Lithuania. Uh, first, when it comes to sustainable mobility. The transport sector is Lithuania's largest emitter, accounting for 30% of total emissions. And over the last decade, this is an area where emissions have actually gone up. Transport emissions have increased by 38%, and without additional measures, transport emissions are projected to continue rising steeply until at least 2024 and probably beyond. Lithuania's plans to increase the use of alternative fuels and innovative transport technologies to electrify its railways and strengthen relevant tax instruments are all steps in the right direction. However, achieving a carbon neutral transport system by 2050 will require more stringent targets and additional measures to address the increasing uptake of car ownership 
and to incentivize a shift to sustainable transport modes. Second, uh, Lithuania's tax system. Lithuania has one of the lowest excise duties on petrol and diesel in the OECD, as well as much lower, a much lower tax rate on diesel compared to petrol. Low tax rates on oil and diesel in the household and agricultural sectors have contributed to an increase in fossil fuel consumption over the past decade. This is an obvious area for attention for Lithuania while taking appropriate measures to limit the burden on the most affected firms and households. Uh, many of Lithuania's neighbors are also having to deal with this challenge. For example, in Latvia, Finland and Sweden, the level of fossil fuel consumption support measured as a share of energy tax revenue is among the 10 highest in the OECD. Thirdly, growth in investment for greening the economy is needed. A public expenditure on environmental protection decreased from 1.3% of GDP back in the year 2000 to just 0.3% in 2018, well below the, o the EU average of 0.8%. At the same time, investment needs in sustainable energy and climate policies alone are estimated at 3% of GDP annually over the next decade. So uh, I, I just repeat that. At the same time, the, the actual investment needs when it comes to sustainable energy and climate policies are estimated at 3% of GDP annually over the next decade. While state funding and external supports such as EU contributions will help reduce this gap, a concrete plan to mobilize private investment is also needed. Uh, finally, Lithuania needs to build on its impressive progress in waste management. In less than a decade, Lithuania has moved from landfilling almost all its waste to recycling and composting most of it. However, per capita municipal waste generation has been increasing since 2009. Lithuania should now focus on reducing waste generation and improving material productivity by adopting and implementing cross-sectoral circular economy policies. Lithuania should also consider implementing a whole-of-government approach to environmental management, better coordination of strategic planning, and increasing public participation in environmental decision-making. For our part, the OECD is working to support ambitious, effective and measurable climate action. Uh, the upcoming COP26 conference will be a critical moment to set out robust pathways to meet the Paris Agreement goals. Our OECD-wide project, Integrating Climate and Economic Resilience, will provide practical guidance for countries as they seek to build their resilience to climate change impacts. To make sure Actions translate into results. The OECD has new work underway to develop measurement frameworks and indicators to track progress on mitigation and adaptation. This work will inform our major climate initiative, the International Programme for Action on Climate, which will help participating countries to monitor, evaluate and improve the effectiveness of countries' climate action plans. We're also working to deliver an inclusive framework on explicit and implicit carbon pricing, which builds on existing work on effective carbon rights and taxing energy use, as well as estimate the cost equivalence of non-market measures to construct implicit carbon prices. Uh, Prime Minister Shimonite, uh, Minister Gent Vilas, uh, Lithuania's environmental performance review recommends a broad set of measures to keep progressing at pace towards a low carbon circular economy. Some of these measures are already part of Lithuania's national strategies and plans. Others have yet to be designed and implemented. But I'm confident that the analysis and recommendations of this review will help guide Lithuania as you continue to design, deliver and implement better environmental policies for better lives. The OECD stands ready to continue to support you in this important endeavor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthias Corman. And now may I invite Minister of Environment Simonas Gentvilas.
Prime Minister, General Secretary, today is a great day for Lithuanian envi environmentalists. Indeed, uh, uh, this is the first re review of environmental performance for Lithuania, and uh, it is the right time to do so. And uh, in my presentation of 20 minutes, I will touch upon the recommendations and how we are planning to implement them. Now I would like my slides on the screen. Well, our government, as you know, started uh, its activity nine months ago, which coincided with the OECD review that uh, was uh, that took place for nearly uh, half a year. So in relation to that, uh, I would like to thank Rudolf Massey and other experts of OECD who contributed to this review by comparing the best practices of the world and uh, uh, highlighting our strengths and weaknesses, also by uh, pointing uh, the areas where we should improve. Well, during uh, the process of accession, we had to meet certain criteria, but now we are already facing up uh, new challenges. Now we have new responsibilities and uh, uh, we have already uh, experienced uh, uh, the cooperation with many uh, more advanced countries such as Canada and others. So basically, we are very grateful for the review that was carried out and for the 43 recommendations that were put in this publication. I think they will serve as a guidelines for the government and the parliament. Well, Lithuania is uh, among the few uh, states in the world uh, that uh, adopted uh, a climate uh, neutrality uh, agenda and undertook the obligation to become a climate neutral uh, country by 2050. But uh, of course, uh, well, if you see our statistics, uh, uh, we can already uh, recognize that uh, more than that our CO2 emissions have uh, reduced by 47 percent. Um, uh, all we have to do is to uh, achieve uh, the reduction of the remaining 43 percent uh, comparing to the levels in 1990. But, as you know, soon we will start uh, counting the reductions or comparing the reduction of emissions against uh, the levels uh, in 2005. And uh, as it was mentioned by the Prime Minister, uh, we managed to decouple uh, uh, the environment protection and reduction of CO2 from, from the economic uh, growth. But uh, a lot has been done, of course, but uh, we need to be, we need to make, to do more. Even Li not only Lithuania, but also European Commission uh, has adopted an ambitious uh, agenda in this uh, area. So co going to back to recommendations, uh, OECD recommends to invest uh, only into Green Deal compliant uh, policies. Mm, the taxonomy of the European Union identifies what investment is green and which is and what investment is not. And uh, from and we. Uh, we will dispose more than 6.5 billion euros uh, of the EU funds, and uh, this subsidy will be directed to every one of us, and uh, it will be a significant uh, uh, input into our efforts uh, to change our economy. We have already made uh, certain specific uh, uh, commitments that we are going to implement by 2020. 23, such as to turn all the public procurement into green and uh, we we are also changing the investment methodology uh, with the purpose of uh, being capable of using them in a more green way environment uh, protection means not only uh, in protection of nature 
population has uh, has a lot of diseases which are related to uh, air pollution, water pollution, and uh, um, of course in Lithuania the air pollution. Um, well, unfortunately, the air pollution is nearly the same as in Paris, which is a much larger uh, city, and there are a lot of premature deaths that are caused by air pollution. Well, and we have not only to uh, invest into development of uh, economic activity, but we also have to ensure our independence from fossil fuel. And uh, Mm, so, to a certain extent, uh, we can our country can be even considered as an energy uh, desert because uh, we do not have uh, any resources. But uh, uh, fossil fuel re or few fa fossil fuel resources. But uh, at, in the government, uh, therefore, we started uh, in, uh, deliberating the changes of the excise tax. And uh, uh, as it was uh, rightly said, uh, our taxes on diesel and petrol are among the lowest in Europe. We have to send a very clear message that uh, every year we are investing uh, into public transport and uh, we will. Um, uh, we bought uh, 100 new electric buses and we're investing into the rail sector as well. So our state is uh, transforming, but we also have to send a clear message to the most polluting sectors. And uh, therefore, uh, this year we are going to deliberate uh, the changes in the taxation on fuel uh, at the parliament. Well, another recommendation of OECD uh, is related to uh, sustainable mobility. And uh, during this review, we had a good opportunity to review our good practices and uh, identify areas for improvement. Uh, we are planning uh, to uh, convert uh, the public transport uh, pool of fleet uh, into ecological. And uh, for the, that purpose, we are working uh, with public transportation companies in different cities. But that is not enough. Uh, Lithuania is a rather scarcely populated uh, country, and we depend uh, on public transportation or on uh, private cars. Our uh, cities are not uh, dense, dense, and uh, if we continue developing along the same lines as we did before, then uh, uh, we will not be able to ensure um, the welfare services that every citizen of our country deserves. So we need to make sure that uh, uh, our spatial uh, planning uh, policies are improved. Also, um, the, the review uh, positively assessed uh, uh, our efforts uh, uh, in, uh, in, in, in changing the landfilling uh, practices. Only a quarter of all the waste generated is now landfilled, uh, which is uh, which has been achieved uh, through an enormous uh, effort and uh, through uh, the introduction of circular economy uh, principles. But uh, we need uh, to do more. Only about uh, only a small percentage of waste uh, is recycled or upcycled, and uh, we have ambitious plans of increasing the ratio of um, uh, recycled materials that are used as raw material in pr in production. And uh, we believe that uh, our industries, our people can uh, teach uh, the population to sort the waste uh, uh, rationally. And also we are uh, revising uh, uh, the landfilling uh, tax, uh, which is again uh, among the lowest in Europe. So. 
Uh, we are increasing the landfilling tax up to 50 euros. Uh, and last week, we unfortunately saw that due to our low landfilling taxes, uh, waste is is uh, sh uh, is carried from, is taken to Lithuania, uh, transported to Lithuania from Poland. So uh, I don't think we can afford uh, incineration of waste that is generated in another country. Lithuania uh, must uh, also use its uh, biofuel uh, resources and uh, the, the biomaterial uh, that we have. And uh, wooden housing uh, um, is uh, one of our priorities. And this recommendation from OECD in relation to that, uh, indeed, is very valuable because we are going to review our policies uh, in the building sector as well. And this uh, pavilion uh, will be open in Dubai very soon, uh, and it will represent Lithuania as a, um, a country that builds uh, its buildings from wood. And uh, I think that uh, this area of construction of building uh, can be developed uh, even further. Sometimes uh, we tend to forget uh, that we are a rich country. Uh, uh, a few years ago, I was sitting next to a, 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 an Australian uh, on the plane. Uh, who said that now uh, I am making money from selling the resources, not uh, raising sheep. In Australia, water is a valuable resource, and uh, we do not have shortage of water. We have good um, and vast uh, groundwater resources, but we do not appreciate these resources enough. And. Uh, in relation to that, uh, uh, we are developing and improving the water supply system, but that is not enough because a lot of uh, population is still receiving uh, low quality water. And the uh, Prime Minister already mentioned in his introductory speech, uh, in that relation, we also have to reduce the use of mineral uh, fertilizers. And, uh, this autumn, uh, in the aut during the autumn session, the parliament is going to deliberate uh, various proposals uh, in relation to this area, and uh, we will um, try to find a solution uh, how to optimize the water supply uh, infrastructure. So we need to uh, reform the water supply sector. The EU Commission and the Green Deal, um, well, we has a Green Deal which is supported by OECD, and soon uh, there will be a conference uh, organized in, in China uh, where we are going uh, to participate. And uh, the topic uh, will be biodiversity diversity and protected uh, uh, areas. In 2024, we will have 20% of uh, Mm, uh, protected territories and 35% of uh, forests. And uh, but the, mm, a, mm, in really, well, we have to, to say to all the population and forest owners that uh, uh, ownership is uh, is also entails uh, certain responsibilities. And uh, we need to address uh, the conflicts that arise in relation to the use of uh, uh, of protected territories and uh, uh, agriculture and other practices. OECD uh, correctly pointed out uh, in its recommendations uh, to the problems in environment protection. 
Kritinius skandalus tokius kaip atliekų padangų, atliekų veikstras. Well, it is true that we have experienced a certain crisis like the, the, the fire in the tire factory in Alitus and some other uh, accidents uh, which prove that uh, our environment protection system is not uh, working properly. We, and uh, that necessitates uh, making a reform uh, in the area of environment protection and in relation to that we are reorganizing the environment protection agency by introducing uh, new capacities and uh, new regulatory mechanisms in it is also very important to involve uh, the society at large. Lithuania is an educated country and we are a mature society and we have to show more trust by involving uh, the members of society into environment protection. And this week uh, in the Parliament, uh, we will consider the proposal regarding introduction of uh, the voluntary inspection or voluntary control. Uh, whereby residents themselves could uh, take over some of the functions that are now carried out by official uh, inspectors. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we will, um, in this way, we will use uh, the abilities of the professional inspectors uh, in a more efficient way. Finally, what must happen for this for this report for this review and this recommendations uh, to make a change and uh, be a success well obviously first and foremost we need uh, bold political decisions and um, political and we are making the political decisions a few of them i have mentioned in my presentation already we are proposing different changes to uh, uh, existing laws and um, we do have uh, we have read the recommendations we know the direction and certain decisions are already in the pipeline also, what we need, well, yesterday we had dinner with the colleagues from OECD and I asked to what extent environment protection is important uh, in the context of OECD. And uh, I'm sure that uh, the, the same challenge uh, exists in every country. Well, it is important that environment protection becomes a part uh, of uh, uh, local policies as well, not solely on the central level. So basically what we need to ensure is a better uh, uh, interdepartmental inter cooperation, interinstitutional cooperation in the country. Uh, we made uh, a good use of the recovery fund and we use the resources to encourage Green Deal, not the fossil fuel based economy. I think we are on the right path. Uh, we have uh, allocated 57% of uh, recovery and resilience fund uh, to the Green Deal measures and uh, 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 green investments are becoming the, uh, uh, the, the most important part of the, our economy. And finally, public at large. We need support from the public, from our society. And uh, uh, after the Paris Agreement, we saw instances that, uh, or examples, uh, that uh, society uh, uh, critically uh, approached uh, uh, all the, rec uh, the recommendations and proposals. So we need to consult more with society. So that is all in a nutshell that I had to say. Well, thank you again, uh, colleagues from OECD for your recommendations. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I will implement them. Thank you, Minister. Please don't leave. I would like to invite uh, Prime Minister Shimonite and uh, Mr. Korman for the press conference. So who has any questions?
Veikia, veikia man čia. Tai kaip kas mokėsi, ką tu turi pamėsėti teisių susitatymą, kaip jūs teisės tiek pats mokėti, kad mes... You mentioned pollution taxes, that there will be changes in the pollution taxes. Who is going to pay those taxes? Well, the OECD recommendation states clearly that we need to deal with the pollution from the transport sector because this is where the pollution increased the most. And we need to apply both incentives and, well, we are applying incentives. We have subsidies for the acquisition of e-vehicles, electric vehicles, but on the other hand, we need to increase taxes. So um, the tax on the first import will be changed. It will be increased for the most polluting vehicles. Uh, it will be... Um, uh, and we are also going to introduce an annual tax that will be applied to vehicles uh, with a higher than average level of pollution. And taking this opportunity, uh, I would like to say that uh, this review also touched upon uh, energy poverty. Therefore, we are planning measures for um, senior citizens, for vulnerable citizens, citizens, but we will have incentives uh, to buy less polluting vehicles. I would like to add something. When we adopted uh, the law, when the law uh, was adopted by the previous government, that law concerned a registration tax and a sales tax as well. So the current tax contains an illogical element and people are stuck with their polluting cars because if they imported cars before uh, this law came into force, uh, their vehicles are become uh, a tax subject. Uh, they, are, they are stuck with those vehicles. Uh, other countries have um, other taxes, the first registration tax and an annual tax or biannual tax. So uh, previously we didn't have this annual tax element. And the registration tax might seem logical, but it does contain some illogical elements that are not in line with our environmental objectives and we'll need to abolish those elements. Thank you. Are there any more questions? I don't see any. Please go ahead. Well, I will ask a question about uh, excise tax on fuels. So what would be the price increase of petrol and diesel. Thank you for the question. I think that uh, there is a certain confusion uh, about the figures and about the direction. I believe we should first agree on the direction and on the issue at, at que in question. Well, uh, we all know that uh, our taxes are close to the very minimum limits in the EU. And we thus create uh, more favorable conditions for people who purchase fuel. Uh, for example, um, the lower tax on the diesel fuel has very clear consequences. People are choosing diesel cars and uh, this is uh, reflected in our vehicle fleet. The excise duties are not only meant uh, for uh, replenishing the budget. Those taxes are aimed at changing people's behavior, and they should do that. If the EU is moving towards uh, less polluting vehicles, and uh, is not willing to give tax incentives to the behavior which is considered to be harmful uh, to the Green Deal or to the environment, uh, we need to uh, adjust our taxes. I don't think we should be discussing now um, 
about uh, price increases in cents or euros. Uh, we need to realize that the current system is not suitable. We need to introduce uh, uh, the element of the CO2 taxation. So when the government is ready with the proposals, it will come forward. Uh, but we need to admit that our current system uh, in principle subsidizes people who use polluting cars. cars. I would like to add that that diesel fuel is used also for heating buildings and we can see this, that the share of fossil fuels used for heating is now growing. Our excise taxes are very low. On the other hand, we have a subsidy of 20% for uh, substituting for renewing boilers and discontinuing uh, the use of coal. And uh, even uh, for this year, we have um, planned subsidies of 85% uh, for uh, vulnerable people, for poor people uh, to replace boilers. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Is that it? Uh, please go ahead. Well, I'm not sure whether you mentioned this in your presentation, but uh, the one of the recommendations says that uh, free parking should be abolished uh, near people's workplaces. Well, uh, parking in local parking uh, areas is taxed with uh, municipal taxes. This is a local tax and uh, municipalities are entitled to charge this tax. I think we should be thinking about uh, public buildings, uh, we should uh, think about it in our laws, and I think that the trend is clear. For example, Vilnius municipality has adopted many decisions to increase the price of parking in the center of Vilnius and to reduce the number of free parking spots in the center. So the signal is clear um, that it is more convenient to use public transport or car sharing uh, to come to the center and not to drive your cars uh, on every occasion. Are there any more questions from the audience? I'm sorry, this question, the interpreters cannot hear the question because the speaker is not using the microphone. Our apologies. Uh, well, if we look at the sectors where coal is used, uh, well, in Lithuania we burn 150,000 tons of coal and 130,000 tons is burnt by the Akmane cement factory, but there is an agreement that uh, this factory will no longer be using coal and the remaining 20% is a rather low figure. And if Vilnius was able to um, refuse coal, other towns can follow this example. Well, we are using the, choosing the regulatory way, we are taxing pollution, but if those measures don't work, we will need to apply uh, restrictions. And we're also using incentives. That was the comment by the Prime Minister. Are there any more questions? If not, uh, we can finish now. Uh, thank you to the Secretary General of the OECD and the Prime Minister and the Minister for the Environment. Uh, so we had a presentation of uh, the Environmental Performance Review of Lithuania. Uh, we are now having a coffee break and our first discussion will start at 11 o'clock.
Ну, Сергей поделал, вот это все. Вот это здесь рейтинг. Рейтинг, скажу. Дар телефон, если не дать. Вот это утро, Герой.
Kur man pasidino? Čia sveiki, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, viskas galim pradėti, ne? Kelios minutės iki 11, tai jūs atsisieskit kaip patogu. Įspaisykit. Opa, svarkiai, svaršiau. Jums svaršiau čia bus. Vandens jį norit čia yra. Palauk, tai jums svaršiau. Ar turit? Gerai, turit. Galim pradėti, ne? Vienas, du, trys, visi. Gerai, tai sveiki susirinkę, toliau tęsiam diskusijos, dvi diskusijos numatytos, nuo 11 iki 12, manuojam užtrukti valandą, klimatui neutraliai ekonomiką, laimėjimas visiems ar nulinė sumo žaidimas, pabandysim atsakyti su ekspertais ir mūsų svečiai, Simonas Gentvilas, aplinkos ministras, sveiki ministrė, dalius Krinickas, premierės patarėjas, sveiki pone Krinickai, EBP aplinkos direktorato direktorius Udolfo Plasi, Good afternoon, Mr. Lassi, Justinas Kilpys, klimatologas, Elena Leontieva, ekonomistė ir Justina Aglinskytė, organizacijos Fridays for Future Vilnius atstovė. Sveiki. Taigi, turim valandą, girdėjom ir ministro, ir premjerės, ir ABP generalinio sekretoriaus pastabas dėl rekomendacijų pirmą kartą Lietuva įvertinta ir visi jūs esat daugiau mažiau susipažinę su tom rekomendacijom ir kaip jūs jas matot iš savo kuriuojamų Sveičių, kas jums atrodo svarbu? Pradėsim nuo ministro. Prašau, pone Gentvilė. Sveiki, tai kad didžiojo daugumą mes jau pristatėm ministerijos ir komandos vardu. Tai buvo ilgas procesas. It's not working? No, it's not working. Ok. Galim įspręsti ten vertimą tada? Can you hear me? Can you hear the interpreting, please? Thank you. So, speaking about recommendations, this the review took place in the form of discussions, and therefore, by answering the questions that were asked and analyzing our processes, was beneficial for both parties. The European Commission, with its director, and and the directives are a kind of a well a tool that controls so how we are implementing what we agreed upon in Brussels. But OECD review is already a different kind of exercise. This is the exercise we are learning from the best practices of other countries, and we are also identifying the best practices in our own country. So you, you cannot be a prophet in your own land, uh, but perhaps our guest uh, uh, perhaps will uh, share his opinion. And uh, the moderator informs that this discussion is uh, streamed live on uh, LRT, uh, the national broadcaster. And if you should you have any questions, uh, uh, please raise your hand and uh, use the microphone when asking your question. So now, may I turn to Mr. Uh, Lazzi about the recommendations and, uh, and the review? Well, uh, first I would like to commend you, uh, Lithuania, because you are coming uh, from runner uh, in climate neutrality policies. You are adopting very quickly uh, relevant uh, policies to uh, increase your ambition, but also to... Uh, yes, please, uh, microphone just... Ah, more closer? Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry. Sorry for that. I don't know if you hear me, but <laughs> I, 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 let me just repeat that you are from runner. No, you are implementing uh, very quickly policies that many other countries at the OECD uh, wants to implement. Uh, you are, uh, of course, uh, in, a, in a very good position uh, now that the economy is uh, growing. Um, of course, uh, you have uh, the proper government to uh, raise the ambition, but also to see in the long uh, uh, view uh, what are the main uh, climate neutrality uh, interventions that you have to have. Uh, second, I think that uh, the recommendations are mainly focused to those sectors that need to evolve also rapidly uh, to decrease uh, their emissions, but also to adapt to new circumstances. Uh, you can take the opportunity to create wealth, new jobs, um, new businesses, in, the, in this uh, climate neutrality roadmap. 
So our recommendations are, of course, uh, uh, in the economic side, because we are an international organization that uh, promotes uh, the development, economic uh, uh, growth, but also we are now, uh, of course, aligning many of our recommendations to the sustainable development goals. Uh, there are, uh, of course, synergies that uh, uh, you can create also uh, in different sectors now that uh, the market is changing. So you, you can be part of this new market for a while uh, and you, you need to, to align your sectorial uh, policies with those uh, international commitments that you have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lester. Bueno, kredinis, kai jūsų būtų vertinimai kokie? Mr. Krenetskas, well, I think that no one from us here uh, has a um, kind of a negative attitude towards the recommendations or the review in general. Uh, well, as, as, uh, the recommendations are broken down into four main groups and uh, they relate to different uh, policies, uh, including uh, the agricultural sector uh, policies and, and many other. So, but despite these recommendations, uh, our Prime Minister has uh, voiced uh, certain challenges that we are facing uh, uh, in the future. Uh, one of them is uh, recovery of resources and uh, return uh, to the circular econo economy. Um, we need uh, in this area to achieve uh, uh, the EU average and we have only four years for this purpose, which is a challenge and it will take a lot of uh, effort from all of us. So we will need to change laws and regulations. Another issue that is really very pertinent to Lithuanian context is agriculture. Uh, well, negotiations uh, regarding uh, agriculture uh, took a long time, especially having in mind its alignment uh, to the green economy uh, principle. Well, in agriculture, uh, if, I, if I remember, 25, at least 25 percent of all the investments uh, uh, have to be coupled to, with the Green Deal. So we will need to transform the agricultural sector towards uh, the Green Deal. But the review itself, um, I think, uh, uh, it is a very positive, uh, and this is a document that we should keep uh, uh, handy on our tables uh, every day, and uh, we need to refer to it in order to uh, stay on the right track uh, on, in our everyday activity. I hope that in cooperation with uh, other countries, we will be able to use the examples of best practices. Mm. Yes. Justina. Well, uh, Ms. Elena Leontieva, uh, Free Market uh, Institute. Well, uh, you asked us to present our views from our own uh, remit. So, uh, uh, and uh, if you ask whether it is positive or negative results, then you have to ask a question, what are the parties that participate in this game? And the answer to the question is, it is us, uh, people, citizens, families with our children and uh, grandchildren. And we need to take care of our earth uh, uh, that has to be preserved for uh, the forthcoming generations. And as, as citizens, we want everything to happen to more efficiently, more quickly, and uh, um, and uh, yielding more benefits. So we have uh, to be educational. We need to encourage people to be more green. 
On the other level, uh, the conflict uh, may lie between the companies or businesses, and uh, some of us uh, are uh, very much dependent uh, on uh, the businesses or activities of those businesses. And also, uh, and, uh, and the goals that uh, the environmental politic, the policy is raising. And uh, well, and here we have to find a right balance between the local and the global. This review does not speak about the global issues, but uh, these global issues are important for the competitiveness of uh, Lithuanian businesses. So you already get the drift. I'm talking about the carbon adjustment mechanism, as there are two ways of solving the issue. Either we uh, achieve a global agreement, or we have to uh, introduce a strict border control. And, for, and both these ways are of vital importance to Lithuania. Mr. Krenitskas mentioned circular economy, and for a small country like Lithuania, uh, circle, it is impossible to, to have a circular economy on a local scale. We need to we need a global economy to exist. Of course, uh, in the global circular economy, we could uh, get the benefits from uh, free exports and imports of raw materials and, and the like. So in order to be sustainable and uh, in order to ensure reasonable growth, we need global decisions and the global attitude towards circular, circularity. The review uh, presents, uh, offers some very useful uh, recommendations uh, and uh, regarding the importance of local communities for in the context of achieving uh, the green goals so with the uh, uh, um, less uh, red tape as possible. And uh, of course, uh, uh, there is a great potential in using uh, the billions that are allocated to Lithuania if we involve uh, communities. But at the moment, uh, we have a situation when even the purchase of electric vehicle uh, is um, accompanied with a huge administrative burden and people just don't dare to even to venture to, 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 to buy electric vehicle. So all these obstacles have to be removed and all these investments have to be transposed to, to the private sector as soon as possible in the most efficient way. And it is also very important not to drain uh, the funds from the private sector. And I'm referring to uh, the profit tax uh, regulations and the like. So the, the only answer is uh, to, to all to many problems is to uh, have companies enjoy uh, the funds that they have earned and uh, let them invest uh, these funds into uh, for their needs. Well, it is also widely recognized that uh, we need to take a quick and efficient action to preserve our planet. But don't forget uh, the change that has to happen in the hearts of every one of us. We shouldn't prevent uh, we, actually, we, we should we should prevent uh, all these um, goals and objectives becoming just a bureaucracy. We need we need to internalize them, and we need to win the hearts and souls of our people. This is the only way that will help us to preserve the planet for many years to come. 
Mr. Kilpis, climate expert. Well, when I was, I read the review and I admit that a lot of issues have been touched upon. But looking from a further distance, in a few weeks, we will have the Glasgow Climate Change Conference. And we see that there are a lot of countries, the commitments of which in relation to the climate change climate change, the Paris Agreement uh, are just uh, uh, not ambitious enough, and we will not achieve uh, the um, the ambitious uh, goal of reducing the global temperature. So the ambition is too low, and uh, and when we talk globally, and when we talk about EU level and Lithuanian level, uh, so it seems that uh, the European Union is uh, uh, striving uh, to do only the minimum in order to achieve those goals, and uh, uh, not to speak, not to say anything about Lithuania. But if we are striving for for a minimum, it doesn't ensure that we will achieve that minimum reduction that we are striving for. So I think that more has to be done. And uh, another thing, when I was reading the review, uh, uh, I thought that uh, uh, the attention paid to different uh, uh, sectors was not even. I think uh, there is a, was a lot of focus on the transportation sector. Uh, well, unless uh, the purpose was to analyze one particular area. And in that case, I would justify the decision. But uh, when the focus is on the transportation, uh, then you tend to forget or ignore uh, the sector of agriculture or other sectors, and uh, they don't uh, get as much attention. So by saying this, I want to say that uh, we can't solve climate change issues by focusing on the transportation sector alone. There are many more things uh, to be solved, many more environmental issues such as biodiversity to be addressed and the use of uh, mineral fertilizers in agriculture and uh, uh, or conversion to organic farming, uh, which would uh, help us to preserve uh, uh, water resources and land resources and, and uh, forest resources. Uh, responsible forest management and responsible forest uh, development uh, could yield uh, very good results. But afforestation measures, uh, again, uh, sometimes are not sufficient. You cannot plant uh, one species of the, uh, of, of the trees, uh, hoping uh, that it will solve uh, the climate uh, change problem. We need biodiversity. Also, uh, in the energy sector, uh, the trends are rather good. Uh, renewable sources or the energy from renewable sources uh, is already competitive. It can compete with other types of uh, um, energy. Uh, but we shouldn't forget that the state should continue investing into infrastructure. And we need uh, to improve uh, the renewable source energy networks in, in infrastructure uh, and make it ready uh, for uh, receiving and uh, uh, transporting this uh, green energy. We have a uh, a liquefied gas uh, uh, terminal, we have good relations with uh, uh, Poland, and, uh, but uh, it seems that we are focusing on that. But if we need, to, if we want to achieve better results in this area, we, need, uh, we have to reduce the use of uh, gas. And now, Justina Glitzkita, Fridays for Future Vilnius representative. No, uh, well, I am uh, I am a co-founder uh, of this uh, movement, and not just a representative, and uh, I can uh, agree to most of my uh, 
uh, colleagues who spoke before, this review is very important for Lithuania. Before this review, I actually uh, felt a need uh, for having a single document that would cover different uh, areas in relation to climate change and environment. And uh, we see that the Ministry of, uh, of, of Environment uh, uh, takes a leading role in uh, addressing the issues, but uh, it is not a task of the Ministry alone. Every one of us has to be involved. And um, as uh, a citizen and a, rep and a representative of uh, uh, civil society, I can only emphasize that without the involvement uh, of uh, us, the people, uh, uh, we will achieve nothing. We can promote different projects and initiatives, but if uh, they if uh, people do not own up to them and do not relate to them, we will achieve nothing. We have lots of regulations and uh, rules, uh, but nobody sticks to those rules. Nobody complies with the rules and they and some companies even prefer paying huge fines uh, rather than uh, being uh, compliant with the rules. This is not a step forward. This is a step backwards. So therefore, I would uh, uh, advocate for um, uh, education campaigns uh, and information campaigns, uh, especially at schools, uh, which uh, are educating the new generation. generation. Uh, well, we talk about the mitigation of climate change, measures, but we also need to think about the adaptation measures. Uh, some experts believe that mitigation uh, policies are not sufficient already. We are already in the situation that we are facing uh, failures. Uh, we failed to achieve uh, the goals and uh, we can't uh, waste uh, time anymore. Uh, we 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 are talking about the same topics we were discussing 20 or 30 years ago. Yes, uh, the progress is obvious, and I can't uh, deny that Lithuania uh, uh, is well advanced in uh, solving many of the issues. But there is uh, a lot more work to be done. And uh, Lithuania, as an agricultural country, um, we should uh, uh, tackle some issues uh, in relation to the use of uh, fertilizers, maybe even introduce a law on the use of mineral fertilizers, and so on and so forth. I could talk on end, uh, but perhaps we should already start uh, uh, the discussion. Uh, I am inviting the audience also to join in the discussion. Um, well, but may I uh, suggest talking about the political will? And the political will is very important, uh, and the uh, minister said that uh, there are uh, negotiations about the introduction of different taxes, but of but that takes a political will. What if it's not exist? Well, I believe that people have political will and uh, certain uh, have in mind certain parts of the society and business, but so the will is there, but the discussions focus on the measures and the necessity to achieve a balance. But the majority of discussions often focus on uh, a senior citizen living in a rural area who has an old car in his garage. So this example is given whenever we talk about uh, ta taxing CO2 or any, um, any other topic. So we have about 30 or 40 percent of the population who is unable to replace um, uh, uh, their vehicles with less polluting ones. So if we apply 
uh, the measures very strictly, there will be 30 or 40% uh, percent of people who are now suffering and who will only become uh, worse off. That is why we are talking about subsidies, for example, um, a subsidy to replace boilers for um, less well-off people. When it comes to cars, we only tax uh, polluting cars. We also have a number of subsidies uh, for public transport. Some uh, population groups can use uh, public transport free of charge. So we will be able to achieve uh, our goals once we have a reply to the question, what should we do with those who live in energy poverty? Paris is a good example. Uh, President Macron uh, was able to unite uh, global leaders uh, around the Paris Agreement, but he failed to increase the diesel tax, uh, which means that uh, France, from, from a global leader, went back to being an average country. So we need to be aware that there will be resistance from the society, but we as politicians should see the future and we should see the costs and uh, what uh, measures we'll need to take and uh, what awaits us, for example, uh, natural disasters and mitigation efforts. But we should persuade uh, the, the public that uh, uh, the cost of not doing anything will be greater than uh, the cost of measures that we're going to take. And this discussion is very important in the parliament. I hope that our parliament will find the courage to adopt the necessary decisions. And another aspect that will determine the success of political decisions. Lithuania is a particular country. Lithuania doesn't have any coal mines. It doesn't uh, extract oil or gas. So this means that we are sending our money abroad. We are still importing about 70% uh, of our electricity. And uh, the major part of that electricity come, comes from unsafe power plants. We also uh, need to think about uh, the job creation uh, strategy. One barrel of oil that is not important, one kilowatt hour of electricity that is not important, helps us to create jobs locally in our regions. And uh, our politicians should find ways to balance uh, the increased costs with the newly created jobs. Uh, and we need to uh, move the gains that, that we have in uh, some sectors uh, for the benefit of uh, less well-off people. Well, for us, uh, the Green Deal and the Green agenda is uh, right uh, from from the moral point of view and we only need to convince uh, the politicians to follow that agenda so when it comes to the energy agenda we need to think about those living in energy poverty and we should focus on job creation yes i can see that there will be some some questions from the audience but i would like to ask uh, mr krinitskas uh, so we know what steps uh, the parliament is going to take this autumn, but what about the political will? Well, I believe that we should uh, ask uh, each politician whether uh, he or she has political will, but we can see that our prime minister is quite determined to implement the green agenda. And in every meeting, in, at high level meetings, uh, international meetings and national meetings. Uh, our Prime Minister's agenda always includes questions related to the Green Agenda. So there is political will and political determination. And I can give you several examples of what political will means. Uh, if we look at uh, the transport sector, and the colleague uh, said that uh, the report uh, focuses greatly on the transport sector. I can say that the Ministry of Transport uh, that is responsible uh, for the green uh, transition is no longer uh, speaking 
about such measures as asphalting the roads. The ministry is speaking about electrification of railways, installation of the um, electrical charging infrastructure and moving tr transport of goods to railways. So we do see this political will that helps us to advance decisions. A, ne a negative aspect is that uh, we uh, until now have lacked political will to increase the landfilling tax. Uh, we are among the countries uh, that have the lowest landfilling tax, although we have created all the necessary infrastructure to use waste in different ways. And up, up until now, the only argument that prevailed was that um, if we increased the landfilling tax, uh, people would uh, pay more for waste management. But this is not true, because if we looked at all the possible ways uh, of uh, using waste, I believe that we could uh, have a tax of 75 euros rather than 50 euros. So political will is important when it comes to political decisions, but the second part of uh, that political will is societal pressure. If uh, society pressures the politicians to adopt certain decisions, they do that. So is there societal pressure? Well, in Lithuania, the societal pressure is not as, uh, as significant as elsewhere. And I spoke uh, with a colleague from the youth movement who said that we don't have a culture of protest. Well, we do have a certain cult culture of protests. Uh, we saw it in recent days. Yes, but those are different kinds of protests. We don't have uh, uh, the habit of protesting in the area of the environment. Thank you. Let us start with the questions from the audience. We'll start uh, from you. Could you please introduce yourself? I'm Algis Baravikas. I'm vice chairman of the Lithuanian Chamber of Agriculture. All uh, panel participants uh, mentioned agriculture. I liked what you said, but I also liked uh, uh, the remarks of um, Madam Yelena. She said that we should also look at uh, the competitiveness side of things. Well, the, the Prime Minister and the panelists focused a lot on uh, the need to reduce the use of fertilizers, um, nitrogen-based fertilizers. Well, we do agree with that, but I we believe that um, uh, the measures chosen shouldn't be so primitive. Uh, we, there is a need to show what a farmer could gain by reducing the use of fertilizers and what a farmer could earn. We have examples in the EU, and uh, if other countries don't reduce the use of fertilizer, we will lose because our production will decrease. What happened to our animal uh, farming? Uh, I believe that we took measures too fast and our consumers are now choosing to go to Poland to buy products and they don't care whether those products are greener, more organic or more animal friendly. So I think that we shouldn't uh, play with this too much. Well, the minister said that we don't have uh, natural resources, fossil fuels, but we have our agriculture and other countries, for example, Russia, take care of uh, their agriculture because this implies uh, security of food supply. So we need to preserve our agriculture. Well, so what you are saying is that if we do it only nationally, but not globally, we might lose and not win. That would be a short summary of what you've said. Yes, we have discussed uh, a lot with the Ministry of the Environment, and we said that we have possibilities, but uh, we shouldn't go too far. Uh, the farmer shouldn't be considered to be an enemy and shouldn't be told to reduce the use of fertilizers in a year or two. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Kilpis uh, has a few remarks. Yes, I would like to react. Uh, well, often uh, during the discussions with uh, farmers, uh, it is said that uh, we are fully subsistent when it comes, uh, we are fully self-sufficient when it comes to food supply. Uh, well, but uh, we need to speak about agriculture as a sector of economy, and there the principle polluter pays should also be valid. Well, if uh, farmers insist on, on continuing with their harmful practices, they should pay for it. They should be subject to the principal polluter pays. Yes, I would also like to uh, react to what was said about animal farming. Well, the report doesn't touch upon it, but uh, the world is recognizing that uh, animal production is environmentally damaging. So the focus now is on plant production. And uh, for example, I am happy that uh, animal production uh, has a rather small share in Lithuania. I believe that we all should aim at reducing the consumption of meat because in the future there will be shortage of meat. And if we uh, eat vegetables, we receive them directly directly if we raise animals uh, our um, footprint is more significant our co2 footprint uh, becomes more significant so i believe that animal production is not uh, the best economic model for lithuania thank you now mr Yes, we have been talking a lot about uh, water pollution caused by the use of fertilizers, because the use of fertilizers uh, directly correlates with uh, water quality indicators. Up until now, uh, our focus was on organic fertilizers, uh, the use of manure, the use, the intensity of the use of of manure and there was a paradox when we started about uh, speaking about regulating the use of mineral fertilizers that was the responsibility of the ministry of uh, economy uh, various calculations and methodologies um, on regulating the use of uh, fertilizers mineral fertilizers and creating the balance between organic and uh, mineral fertilizers um, should be the responsibility of a different entity. It should be the responsibility of the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Environment rather than the Ministry of uh, Economy. I think that they should be responsible for finding the balance uh, uh, on the of the use of mineral and organic fertilizers the minister please yes we should uh, uh, speak the truth when we think about the future well the transport and agriculture the heating sector are living in debt when it comes to future generations so we need to uh, plan our decarbonization uh, strategy we do have some positive examples for example uh, the OGA group of companies uh, have the aim of uh, producing food without any carbon footprint by 2030 so yes we do have uh, to identify several issues, the use of fertilizers, also the uh, CO2 emissions in animal farming, um, and uh, some other measures. Well, it's a paradox, but uh, out of uh, 76 kilograms consumed by every Lithuanian every year, only half is raised in Lithuania, is produced in Lithuania. So it doesn't matter whether we eat or we 
meet or we don't, it's a personal choice. But what matters is uh, whether the meat is produced here using European methods or that it will be imported from Russia. Well, I believe that it would be better for us to have meat produced with European uh, standards, that is locally produced meat. So that environmental standard is important. Uh, what I would like to say to the sectors of the economy, we shouldn't question the goal, we should question the measures. And we are often stuck with discussions uh, about specific uh, measures. Well, now, thank you. Mr. Uh, I would like to return to the first interventions of Justina and Justina. No? Uh, because uh, we have to have a comprehensive view when we talk about environmental management. But the only way to do it is with the public information, with public engagement, and we are expecting a behavioral change in the society because this is happening around us. Uh, that's why you are here, very uh, young people that uh, are concerned about the, the pollution problems that uh, produ the productive sectors are creating, but also you are concerned about the future uh, of your own future, oh, yes, uh, and the future of your sons, perhaps. Um, this, is, this is the most important part. Uh, let me just retrieve uh, some of the numbers that we have in the report, because we have several uh, chapters, but uh, we, we are proposing these uh, taxes because uh, diesel cars are killing people. In, in the long run. So there are uh, 2,000 uh, uh, or 2,700 premature deaths associated with diesel emissions uh, because of the PM 2.5 uh, uh, pollution problem. Um, and we have to remember that the COVID-19 created, or at, at the moment there are uh, 4,900 deaths because of COVID. So uh, this is the, the, the magnitude of the problem that you are facing right now. When we talk about, for example, the agricultural sector and the nutrients, the pesticides we are using that uh, didn't remain in the field that you apply, uh, but they move to other ecosystems. And finally, they return with the different impacts. Uh, now you know that uh, we are eating plastic and fishes. No? Now we know that we are, of course, having cancer be uh, uh, because of pesticides. And we have to inform that in a more precise way. We have to track those uh, health problems because at the end, that is the main purpose of an environmental policy, to protect life, to enhance, of course, the quality of life of the people, but to protect the ecosystems and the natural resources that we already have in, in, in this case in Lithuania. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would you like to respond? No. Uh, one more question. Mr. Pranskietis. Thank you for giving me the floor. When looking at the report, I'm very happy to see that um, uh, the entire government should be encouraged. Well, I see, uh, look at the participants today and I see representatives of uh, two ministries here. And I believe that uh, Mrs. Leontieva was very right in saying that we should think about the entire economy. I will not uh, react to what you have said about agriculture. Well, uh, what you are saying is not based on facts, but on a collection of different opinions. Well, the report states cor correctly that uh, um, there is a need to reduce uh, uh, the pressure of uh, fertilizers uh, from agriculture. Well, but uh, when we speak about fertilizers, you should have knowledge about fertilization. And uh, a couple of years ago, we agreed with Mr. Kreniskas that the major pollution came from towns and agriculture is responsible for only 13 percent of the pollution and it is only related to waste we don't have a precise methodology and we have agreed that the ministry should uh, 
uh, developed a methodology to calculate the load of fertilizers from agriculture. So please don't forget that. I would also like to uh, uh, speak about political will. You are talking about environmental taxes as a share of BV, B, uh, GDP. So you are talking about 1.9% and then uh, environmental taxes as a share of all uh, income, that is 6.4% uh, in Lithuania and about 5% OECD average. So these figures will say a lot to politicians. When it comes to diesel fuel, we should also be aware that uh, we mm, are talking about equalizing the excise duty. Well, I do agree that diesel uh, is a more polluting type of fuel, but uh, diesel-fueled cars use less fuel. We need to take these things into account. And then uh, gradually abolishing support or subsidies to all fossil fuels. Well, if you remember what happened in 2016 when we uh, abolished um, VAT on, uh, heat, on energy for heating, uh, well, the situation is going to be complicated. Well, Mrs. Leontia would like to respond because you were taking a lot of notes. Yes, uh, I think that uh, I was right, in, uh, I probably wasn't right and uh, did not uh, use the opportunity not to say anything about agriculture. But again, I would like to state that the purpose of uh, the taxes in question is not fiscal. Uh, their purpose is uh, to change people's behavior, but of course they do have a fiscal burden. And uh, when we speak about taxes and increasing taxes, we need to look at what taxes could be reduced in parallel. So uh, we need a holistic approach, so, which is now quite popular. Mr. Kilpis, please. Yes, I would like to say a few words words about tax collection and uh, using tax income. The report mentioned uh, the share of GDP devoted to environmental measures. Uh, that share is very low, it's 0.3 percent, and uh, this figure uh, is now uh, considerably lower compared to 2005. I believe that uh, our government should allocate a larger amount of uh, a larger share of budget. Another aspect is earmarking of tax income, because we used to have very, a very bad practice of um, using collected environmental taxes for completely different purposes. For example, uh, uh, funding for climate change was used for increasing teacher salaries at one point. At one point. And, uh, uh, so it, the amount was uh, 10 or 14 million. Another example. Uh, some of that income was uh, used for rather doubtful projects, for example, uh, for asphalting gravel roads, and the, the usefulness of those projects was very doubtful. So two things are important when speaking about taxes. Taxes should be proportionate, and the income collected from those taxes should be used for specific uh, purposes, intended purposes, because if our society sees that the money is not used in the correct way, there will be a lot of resistance. Mr. Krinitskas, 
Yes, Mr. Pranskietis touched a very wide uh, topic, uh, that is taxes in general. When it comes to 9% of VAT on uh, heating prices, well, we shouldn't forget other issues, that is the level of income, the affordability of heating, energy, poverty. And when it comes to this specific uh, subsidy, and when we look at uh, the increasing prices of energy, this issue will provoke long discussions in the parliament if those discussions take place. I would also like to respond to what Mr. Kilpis has said. Uh, increasing environmental taxes or the introduction of new environmental taxes is related to greening the budget and uh, to the measures that are part of the Green Deal. Uh, and these will be the indicators that will be used to measure uh, the greening of our budget. So if we introduce a tax or increase a tax, and if we don't plan to invest the money collected um, as a CO2 tax into environmental measures, that tax wouldn't be effective. So when it comes to those taxes, we should uh, distinguish between more fiscal ones and we should think how we are going to use those taxes once they are collected. We should also think about uh, this circumvention of taxes. Well, there are taxes that can't be avoided, but there are taxes, uh, the collection of which is automatic, and we uh, should plan the use of uh, the, this tax revenue very carefully. And the government, when speaking about uh, budget formation, should come up with uh, specific proposals on how tax revenue will be used and for what purpose uh, it will be used. So I believe that there was there will be a wide discussion uh, in the parliament this autumn. The minister, well, there is uh, an English saying, tax what you burn, not what you earn. Well, I cannot uh, put an equation mark uh, with our discussion, but uh, yes, uh, the uh, in the new budget, we are planning to increase the non-taxable part of income of the population, and we are trying to encourage to spend uh, that tax income, that part of the income um, on investments. We should also speak about uh, profits, tax allowances, and we should also uh, give the possibility for people to choose but uh, so some taxes are, cannot be avoided and we should really tax what we are burning uh, because uh, well we are burning certain molecules they yes please Mr. OECD are measuring effective carbon rates that means that uh, the the whole set of uh, economic instruments helps uh, the the policy that we are of course uh, promoting then uh, the effective carbon rates is a specific indicator of the OECD and we see that uh, 63 percent of the carbon emissions are of course uh, related with energy use um, is charged by your taxes but uh, mainly in the road sector there are other sectors that can balance that effective carbon rate to increase the, of course, the revenues of the government to invest in those uh, productive activities that will give you uh, a different future. Uh, and I would like to end with this because uh, you have to decide what will be your role in the next uh, 30 years. 
Uh, that is a, a very important question for competitiveness process, no? because do you want to be part of the problem or do you want to be uh, in the front line of new businesses uh, and in the front line of new technologies implemented in the agricultural sector or in the service sectors? Uh, and this is, this is the choice that young people also want to take. I mean, uh, it's, it's not an easy decision because sometimes uh, you are focused uh, in how much money I have to pay this year, but uh, you have to see in the long run that uh, in, in 2050, the European Union will be different than today. Gerai, mes turim dar klausimų yra, ne, iš publikos ar... Okay, are there any more uh, questions uh, from the audience? We still have a few minutes and we have uh, been talking about um, uh, taxes a lot. Uh, but the main purpose is to change people's behavior. Mm. So, uh, what ways will be will we be using to change people's behavior? What uh, solutions would be best for Lithuania? So could you please uh, give your ideas? Well, I think uh, that the most sustainable solution is for us uh, as citizens and consumers uh, are brought closer together because there are people who are talking in public and saying very nice words but when it comes uh, to putting uh, the money where the mouth is then they demonstrate their real choices so the closer uh, our words uh, come to our actions so uh, the closer the green lithuania is yes i do agree that climate change and climate change decision is a social problem uh, there are no technological solutions the, the, the technological solutions are already there but um, about 10% of people in general are those who are pioneers, they are proactive, they take action, they uh, eat uh, plant uh, food of plant origin, they are bicycling, they are walking and so on and so forth. Then there is another 10% of people who would always uh, protest, uh, they would always stick to the status quo, they don't want any change. And then the, the remaining 80% are people who are just living their daily normal lives. They go to school, they go to work, and all they care about is uh, the comfort of their own lives. Uh, so here we have to speak about systemic change. We cannot uh, expect responsibility from every one of us, but for this, as the systemic change necessitates political will. And I can see the political will from uh, the Ministry of the Environment, but I don't see this uh, the political will in the Parliament. Let's hope that uh, this autumn will um, demonstrate some changes. Yes, uh, I do agree that uh, it's an issue of values. I, I am always pro-education and information. And uh, it is, uh, well, we have to admit that uh, the environment is a little bit uh, forgotten. And uh, yes, we keep talking about the sustainability, but this issue is of no importance to an ordinary citizen of Lithuania. Well, those who are here present today, we are well informed. Uh, but we need to convey the same information and principles uh, to other people. As, um, as long as um, the, the people don't understand this, uh, as long as they do not relate it personally, they will not understand the consequences of climate change. We need to explain what is the relationship between the climate change and our lives. So for me, uh, perhaps the answer is education. It, education uh, would also uh, offer means uh, how to make uh, the green living more comfortable. Because at the moment, uh, even if uh, you are pro-green, it is very difficult to be this bicyclist, green bicyclist or green eater. 
minister. I had a conversation with the Swedish finance minister. Two Electrolux plants were closed in Munich and in Sweden. And in Munich, it caused a lot of um, uh, protests. Uh, and Sweden, uh, this process was very calm. Why? Because uh, Sweden managed to show what the future has for the people who are being laid off. We will give you this and you will be safe. So the 80% uh, uh, of the population that uh, wants to feel comfortable, uh, they, all they want is safe. Therefore, we need to offer solutions for them. Uh, we need to say that, yes, uh, there will be public trans transport for your children to, to go to school. Uh, yes, we will take care of your heating and, and so on and so forth. We need to demonstrate the vision. We need to give them a vision. Uh, and uh, the vision uh, has, uh, and uh, this formation of the vision has to be very uh, responsible. Uh, we cannot offer a vision that we are not capable of implementing of. So, and the another solution is, of course, pricing. Pricing, introduction of taxes, and uh, also education of a responsible consumer. Uh, at Gregeo last year, uh, there was a, a boycott of the company after the leak of pollution. It was a business-to-business -business boycott. Um, but it lasted one month uh, only. Uh, so we need to think about pricing of our resources, in some extreme uh, cases, uh, banning of certain practices. I think that uh, we have to put more emphasis in this behavioral change that is happening now because of the pandemic. Now you see that people are more willing to do teleworking. But uh, during the pandemic, uh, you saw in the streets uh, new uh, electromobility modes uh, that is changing the way we are, of course, uh, uh, doing the transportation um, of, of goods and people. But uh, in many productive sectors, the electrification and digitalization of the production is happening very fast also. And in the near future, precise agriculture, uh, a very... Uh, uh, advanced uh, products uh, with uh, a low carbon footprint will dominate the, the, the market, as I was saying, but will also uh, uh, create uh, new conditions in the economy. This is a window of opportunity uh, for the next uh, five years, I think so, uh, because um, European countries are changing in this window of opportunity that the pandemic created. And this is the moment to take action, as, as the government is taking action. And I think that uh, you will succeed if, of course, uh, you are able to engage all the sectors that are resisting because of uh, conservative uh, positions. But uh, they, will, they will need to advance and use uh, massively uh, new technologies and new options for the future. Thank you. Yes, uh, I will add a couple of other principles. I think that society has to be involved more, uh, both in the decision making and in education efforts. We need to talk to those who are supporting the initiatives and those who are opposing them in the area of environment and also so um, we didn't talk about this, but uh, one of the recommendations was um, uh, higher and more extensive involvement of uh, local municipalities, as municipalities are closer uh, to, uh, to people. And uh, municipalities uh, have uh, uh, a different, may have a different uh, viewpoint uh, from the central government and talking about uh, the green deal uh, we can we have uh, several criteria uh, identifying uh, certain uh, goals to be achieved in in the area of innovations um, and uh, rest restrictions and so on and so forth so well 
respecting those criteria, we have to make uh, sure that uh, uh, the criteria do not uh, contradict one another. Uh, what I mean is to build uh, uh, windmill um, power plants. We cannot build uh, windmill power plants in the places where we have protected species. So we have to be careful. We have to find the balance between different aspects, uh, green economy, societal, societal interests, and so on and so forth. Let's hope for a better future. Well, thank you very much, uh, all the participants uh, of the panel. Um, I, uh, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. And uh, uh, now we are changing the speakers and we will continue our discussions. So we continue our discussion. The second discussion is about sustainability and mobility, friends or foes, and uh, this discussion is being streamlined on uh, our national broadcaster RT. Uh, we have Marius Kuedis, uh, Minister of Transport, uh, Gintaria Krushnenia, Vice Minister of Environment. We have already introduced Rodolfo Lassi, then Kristina Gauche, uh, Sustainable mobility expert uh, Mindov Gasinkiewicz, president of Lithuanian Association of Municipalities, and Egidius Skrodanis, head of Intelligent Transport Systems Group. Well, uh, the Minister of Transport did not participate in the presentation of the review, but you know the statistics. Uh, the uh, trans about uh, transport is responsible for the highest uh, proportion of uh, pollution, CO2 emissions in Lithuania. And over the 10 years alone, the pollution from uh, the transport sector increased by 38%. So what do you have to say about the statistics? Well, it says that uh, the Lithuanians do not imagine their life without a private car. And... Uh, uh, and the certain steps uh, that are being made uh, nowadays uh, in the politics uh, only encourages the use of uh, uh, private uh, cars. So actually, I read uh, the part uh, about uh, the transport sector in the review very careful, carefully. I know that, uh, well, so there are changes happening, uh, but these changes are different. Vilnius, for example, uh, they introduced a, uh, a transport tax, but other municipalities, uh, they, 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 they didn't do that. And uh, a lot of settlements and cities are expanding, and the question is why the government is not uh, investing more into the development of infrastructure. But, uh, uh, I think under the present circumstances, uh, we cannot do otherwise. That's uh, because uh, the spatial planning uh, makes us use uh, or, be, uh, or increase the dependency on uh, private cars. So we need to change those practices. Uh, we have, well, 40% of families have uh, two or more uh, cars. This is a lot. Uh, the car fleet is old and uh, polluting. 80% uh, uh, are diesel cars. And that creates the challenges that we are facing today. Well, talking about the solutions, 
Well, I do support uh, some of the recommendations and I think along the same lines, but on the other hand, the, I have, uh, I'm being cautious regarding some of them. For example, to eliminate the requirement uh, to plan a certain number of parking spaces or to eliminate uh, free parking spaces for uh, cars of employees. Well, maybe in the future it is possible provided we have a well-developed uh, public transport system and we have uh, a good network of uh, um, bicycle routes and so on and so forth. So, which recommendations do you support? Well, yes, I, I, I support uh, many recommendations, such as uh, uh, the coordination of uh, spatial planning with the transport, public transport routes. And uh, yes, this is a very in, is important principle that has to be um, adhered to. Also, investments into the sustainable mobility, uh, the junctions of uh, uh, the, the of, of the bicycle routes and uh, walking routes. So we are already directing all the investments in, uh, in these areas. And uh, we are also trying to develop uh, the uh, uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure. So um, the challenges, nevertheless, are huge. We have to admit that. And therefore, in some cases, we have a question, where do we start? Mr. Sinkiewicz, uh, 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 Minister mentioned only the Vilnius and Vilnius region. Uh, what other municipalities uh, think about it? How do they view the, how do they view the situation? Yes, uh, people live not only in Vilnius but in other towns as well, and we are facing similar problems. Perhaps uh, their scope is a little bit different, or their scale. And, uh, I would. Uh, echo the words uh, of the minister by saying that we are just not capable of uh, getting out of our cars. And uh, let us not forget also the, the review uh, indicated that uh, the public uh, transport uh, uh, vehicles or the, the vehicles that are used for public transport are, are roads and uh, the uh, and diesel uh, fuel uh, dominates among them. Not only Vilnius wants to become a green city, uh, and becoming a green city or green town is an ambitious uh, goal. We're introducing non-smoking zones, but uh, not only that, uh, we are now introducing zones uh, where uh, 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 polluting uh, vehicles will be prohibited within certain hours of a day. And uh, we also, there are some ambitions, not only in Vilnius or, or Vilnius region, um, to expand uh, the network of, uh, of charging stations for electric vehicles. Uh, Electric vehicles are not popular, uh, not only because nobody can afford them, but also because there is no infrastructure for charging them. And our ambition is uh, to have about uh, 230,000 uh, uh, cars uh, in our fleet uh, by 20, uh, uh, 30, yeah. and uh, we have only a sm very small proportion of uh, such vehicles in our fleet right now. So there is a lot of work uh, to do, and uh, also in the public uh, transport, we have uh, 32 public transport uh, companies uh, um, across uh, Lithuania in different municipalities. So we need uh, to uh, invest uh, in, invest capital in, uh, in in kind of a structural reforms in there. Yet, um, well, when you have 
have a look at uh, this resilience uh, plan and when uh, you take uh, uh, the number that is planned or the, the funds that are planned uh, for the renovation of uh, trans public transport fleet uh, we see that uh, the funds are just negligent of, uh, the, it, it will not cover uh, all the costs of course we do not expect everything uh, for granted but uh, we need uh, to raise awareness and not on it only in Vilnius so your focus or your emphasis on uh, the lack of funds for changing the situation. Right, uh, uh, Vice Minister of uh, Environment and Gintaira Krishnyanya, what do you think? What is the largest or the, the, the most pertinent issue? Nine out of ten uh, journeys are uh, car journeys and we are a nation of car owners. If we do nothing, uh, uh, then uh, the costs of uh, status quo will be very high. Now, there are thousands of people who, are pre who die prematurely because of the pollution, and uh, that also is detrimental to uh, our obligations, our international obligations that we undertook. And finally, in, when we have an inefficient uh, fleet, an old fleet, uh, uh, it means that we are paying a lot uh, for uh, imported uh, fuel. So doing nothing is not the right uh, scenario for Lithuania and that is uh, uh, fairly clear but how to change things and how to transform the situation so and in that respect I'm very grateful for very important insights that were mentioned in the review um, some of them would yield long-term results and in particular I mean the spatial uh, planning or because we need to change in uh, uh, the infrastructure in such a way that would encourage uh, sustainable uh, mobility and uh, we need to make sure that uh, a car is not the only comfortable alternative uh, for a family to go from place from spot, uh, from spot a to spot b and we can only achieve uh, transformation if we offer a, an enabling alternative for every single family. When the family, without thinking about the climate change or pollution, would choose uh, the, uh, an environmental friendly way of uh, traveling. And then, uh, of course, we, we have to talk about the funds. We have different programs like a climate change plan and uh, the funds allocated under it. The, we, have, we are also implementing the pollution, polluter pace uh, principle, which uh, yields uh, two benefits, two sorts of benefits. First, uh, the investments uh, to further invest in, 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 in further development of the infrastructure. But on the other hand, it is kind of a subsidy to uh, uh, for an individual who then decides uh, uh, what to, to choose. So every individual uh, basically makes a choice between a more advanced alternative or less advanced uh, alternative. So we also have to introduce some kind of a pricing signals. Um, and we already started discussing uh, the um, car pollution tax and uh, we started discussions about uh, making uh, petrol and diesel uh, tax uh, at least uh, equal because at the moment in Lithuania taxes on petrol are lower than for diesel and as a result we have 70 percent of diesel cars which is a result of a long-term excise uh, policy that has to be approached very carefully. Uh, thank you. 
may I first respond to, to, the, to the previous speakers? Uh, well, I would like to advocate for those people uh, who are using uh, their private cars uh, and sometimes uh, polluting cars. I understand that there are plans to increase uh, public transportation passengers uh, and to, in, uh, to develop uh, the network of uh, sustainable mobility uh, and uh, to shift uh, the freight uh, to greener means of transport. But we, you cannot expect uh, to leave this responsibility with individuals only. In Vilnius, the, in Vilnius, the car fleet is 250,000 uh, different means of transport. The bus fleet consists of 500 uh, buses. So if all of them are replaced by electronic vehicles, by electric vehicles, I'm sorry, electric vehicles will not change the situation. It will not change uh, the overall situation. In, and although I support 100% all the recommendations, but I think that we need to emphasize or to put the, the, the right uh, emphasis on uh, different uh, uh, solutions that are being proposed. Uh, you know, of course, we do encourage uh, use of uh, electric uh, uh, vehicles. Uh, but uh, the price but the price of these vehicles uh, is not uh, affordable for most of uh, the citizens especially in uh, peripheral areas for example dubingi and i mentioned dubingi as a settlement in lithuania because what i want to emphasize that we don't we need to change the attitude and the organization of uh, measures we have uh, a very poorly organized uh, public uh, transport uh, system and that has to be improved. Sometimes all it takes uh, is uh, to be a little bit uh, more flexible and uh, uh, so that the families don't ha have to wait uh, for the bus service uh, uh, for one hour. Actually, it doesn't matter for them whether the bus is old or, or new. All that matters is that the service is functioning. Right. Well, thank you very much. You have touched upon very um, a variety of issues, but one of your ideas that you voiced is that uh, too much responsibility on the final consumer, correct? We expect that um, a consumer will just uh, get out of his diesel car and that will change everything. Yes, uh, well, what I mean to say that it's not the six or nine buses that uh, create uh, the, the pollution, that are responsible for the pollution. And it is, uh, well, I, I do agree to that, but it is uh, incorrect to expect that everything will change uh, within uh, several years. And uh, in order to achieve a real change, we need to resort to a variety of other, maybe even soft measures. There is a huge uh, concentration on new infrastructure, new service, new bicycle uh, routes, but nobody sp speaks about the, uh, the demand side. Everybody talks about the supply, but nobody talks about the demand side. And uh, some solutions uh, would cost nothing for us. Uh, if uh, parking fees uh, are higher, we wouldn't even think about taking uh, or going by car to, to, to the city center. And uh, I, I was responsible for um, a number of mobility projects. But if you do that, you become not popular among the population. 
Well, uh, yes, uh, actually, I, I'm 100% behind uh, converting the rights onto greener uh, means of uh, transports, uh, especially on the green uh, railway. And uh, uh, everything that travels for more than 300 kilometers, according to the, to the EU ambition, uh, has to travel by rail. So the question is what to do with the cities. Uh, should we increase and develop uh, the infrastructure uh, so that it is easier to travel within the city or to prohibit or restrict uh, access uh, to uh, the cities? And then we have to consider the question of price or cost, uh, how much uh, every solution will cost. And uh, as you know, from 2023, we are introducing uh, the distance-based uh, road use uh, charge. And uh, therefore, it will not. It will increase the price of transporting uh, the freight uh, from one end of Lithuania to another by road. So this is the reality. We understand the challenge. The question is, what uh, means of transport we are using? Yes, when it comes to freight transportation, we have discussions about this in the ministry and. Uh, uh, the, there are plans to direct uh, some freight transport to Via Baltica, and uh, there are also uh, discussions to uh, get about 40% of electricity from renewable resources. I, when I hear these aims, I usually ask the Ministry, how are you going to calculate this indicator? They tell me, you should talk to the Ministry of Energy, but the Ministry of Energy Energy tells me to talk to the Ministry of Transport. Well, I can see that the Minister is very happy to hear these comments. So it's a question of responsibility. Yes, we started our discussions when we should prohibit uh, cars with internal combustion engines. And uh, we are also planning to have the relevant infrastructure in place by that year. But there are no discussions on what kind of electricity those uh, vehicles should run on. So we are going to have forced use of uh, renewable resources, but this will not happen throughout the EU. Yes, we sometimes put the horse in front of the cart, and I usually call these discussions ideological discussions and not evidence-based discussions. Well, I wanted to provoke you a, li provoke you a little bit. Yes, the Vice Minister. Well, yes, uh, the Ministry of uh, Energy is responsible for renewable resources, and uh, we do have uh, 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 objectives related to renewable resources in the EU. Well, not 100% as we have set out in Lithuania, but about 40%. So there is a goal, and please don't uh, demonize electrification because electrical power is becoming greener. Yes, and now a question to the representative of the OECD when it comes to responsibility and areas of responsibility. Well, we are hearing several ministries and they uh, don't know uh, whose responsibility is what. Is it a common problem in the EU? Okay, okay, yes, yes, of course. It will take a few moments, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, but uh, because you ask us uh, to deliver a special chapter on sustainable transport, I will be very frank with you. No? When we saw the numbers, we saw that Lithuania has uh, the oldest vehicle fleet in the EU. So what you did it, no? How you did it? Well, because you are buying, you bought a lot of uh, second-hand uh, diesel vehicles from uh, other countries. And this is, this is a huge problem, and the huge problem needs a whole government approach. Uh, thank, to, uh, thank to God, we, we have in the OECD family the International Transportation Forum, 
So they help us in addressing this specific issue. And we suggested uh, different policies uh, to address, of course, uh, this, uh, this very, very, very uh, unique uh, uh, situation. Uh, first, uh, I have to say that uh, diesel is the worst option for uh, individual transportation at the moment. The vehicle lasts forever if you want, because uh, diesel engines are robust. But uh, it, the, these, these vehicles are very efficient if they use less uh, uh, fuel, but they release uh, very dangerous uh, pollutants. So it, it, is, uh, uh, it is a dilemma that you have. What we can do now, are we going to use public funds to finance private disbursement? Because this is a, 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 a fiscal uh, question. Uh, is this uh, uh, allowed in Lithuania? Can you do that? Can you take public money to, to give the money to a, a single family or a single person that wants to change their diesel vehicles for an electric mode of transportation? Uh, it can be a bicycle, as uh, Fran is doing. It can be a, a trottinet or an electric uh, uh, individual mode of transportation. But uh, we have uh, several uh, dimensions in this problem. Um, and let me, let me return to the uh, comprehensive, in our uh, point of view, recommendations that we are doing. First, transport planning and land use must be in the same place. Uh, why? Because if you grow, uh, if, if the urban sprawl uh, didn't help uh, in the solution of the problem, uh, you will increase the problem. And uh, instead of reducing your fleet, you will be growing your fleet. And people will choose the cheaper mode of transportation. Again, diesel vehicles in the second uh, hand market. Second, uh, yes, we have to harmonize all policies uh, in the country to really make difficult diesel vehicle lives. You have to increase the death rate of diesel vehicles as soon as possible. Uh, and this is, this is a, 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 a full of government effort because you cannot have subsidies this size and incentives this size or a carbon tax this size. No, you have to balance both subsidies and incentives in order to promote a cleaner uh, modes of transportation. And uh, finally, uh, you have to have a, 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 an integration uh, approach in the road, rail, and maritime freight, uh, and also passenger uh, modes of transportation. Let, let me tell you why. Because you have on-road vehicles, diesel vehicles, and off-road diesel machinery and vehicles. And you, you need to switch in both sides fuels and technologies in order to reshape the, the, the whole uh, transportation sector. And this is, this is the challenge that uh, we are, of course, uh, helping you to address. Uh, thank you, Mr. Skrodenius. We could uh, uh, just stop here and speak about uh, second-hand diesel vehicles. Well, they are very harmful. Yes, I also wanted to respond to the discussion that, that took place before. Mm, well, I sometimes um uh, wonder whether we want to achieve what we what would really want to achieve what we have set out to do for example we speak about buses we want uh, everybody to take a bus but do we want to ride a bus when i look at vilnius uh, what are the main reasons uh, why people uh, refuse to take uh, a bus? Well, the buses, buses should be fast. Mm, for example, if we we'll, uh, know that uh, uh, the bus um, it travels the same distance in 36 minutes and a car in 12 minutes, the difference is obvious. So for this to work, the difference should be 16 or 18 minutes. Then people would 
think what to choose. We do have fast buses in Vilnius, but they travel in the lanes where cars are allowed to make a right turn. For example, I travel those buses every morning and I see the obstacles that they are facing. Well, we sometimes install cameras to observe the situation, but they are removed in two months and nothing changes. So do we really want uh, public transport being to be popular? So should we apply pressure? But we don't do that. We just try something for a couple of months and then we give up and say that Lithuanians are not the nation to choose public transport. Or we say that we need more money. Money. But this is not always the case. We could use the same money and do more, or we might see that we need just a small additional injection of public money or additional money to achieve a good result. So we need to be honest, we need to be sincere, and we need to do uh, to take sincere action. If we do that, we will resolve uh, the problem and there will be no need for some extensive strategies. Thank you. First, it's not about having or not a car. You can have a car and you can park the car during the week uh, uh, and use the car only during the weekends or for holiday reasons. Uh, the problem, in my opinion, is how you use your car and where you use your car, and what is the purpose of using a car. And this is, this is a new approach that we are applying in, at the OECD. Instead of measuring kilometers that uh, you are uh, using for displacement, you have to uh, uh, um, uh, track uh, accessibility to the, uh, your needs. No? You need to buy things, you need to have a leisure time, you, you want to go to the movies or to the movie theater, or you want to go to the beach. So uh, the, the government can provide the accessibility to those places that you need, allowing you, of, for example, doing teleworking. So instead of moving your car from your house to your office, you are teleworking. Instead of going with your car to the beach, you are using train, for example. No, if you if you if you want it, of course. But if you want uh, to, you go to the movie theater. Well, you you use uh, uh, an iPad and Netflix. No, instead of moving your family to the movie theater. So accessibility must be the future indicator for the transportation sector, instead of uh, number of cars or uh, kilometers of displacements and fuels, of course, fuels mm -hmm. consumption. I would like to remind you that our audience can also participate in this discussion. If you have any questions, uh, you will be given uh, the microphone because microphones are available and please raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Yes, I want to react what has just been said. So we heard that uh, all issues related to public transport can be solved by the local government. The only thing that is lacking is political will. So I'm addressing Mindoga Sinkevichus. Please do something. Yes, change the situation. Well, I believe that when it comes to pollution from cars, for example, I uh, take my child from the parliament to uh, a music school and uh, it takes me about an hour because I'm stuck in traffic and I always always angry with, with the municipality because I think that the traffic lights are not uh, uh, regulated uh, and adjusted properly, but I might be mistaken. Well, I'm a young mother, I'm a new mother, and um, uh, previously, I avoided having a car, but when I uh, 
gave birth to my children, I had to buy my own car. So if you live further from the center and you don't have a car, it is impossible to plan your day, especially if both parents are working and if they want their children to have some extra curricular activities. Yes, I believe that this is a problem of cities, of large towns. But, uh, well, Mr. Sinkavichus, we heard that you could uh, address all the problems. Well, yes, I was uh, about to stand up and go and solve those problems, but I will uh, stay in this discussion. Yes, we can uh, solve certain problems. For example, I recently purchased uh, an electric bike bicycle. I also uh, have a hybrid car. What I want to say is that our bus fleets are changing and there are incentives that allow us to uh, replace, renew our fleet. We can uh, have less polluting vehicles and these processes are taking place. They are gaining momentum. We also have some support schemes, for example, the hmm, Recovery and Resilience Fund. Uh, bus companies uh, are usually municipal companies and we can't tell them to change diesel buses into electric ones overnight. This will not happen because it is expensive and it is a complicated process, but those processes are taking place. And in this uh, discussion panel, I believe that in, in, in a group of like-minded people, we all agree that something should be done, but the main question is how to speed up those processes, how to increase the pace. Local authorities could say that uh, they could do more, but but what kind of tools are available to them? Uh, what about their financial dis independence? It is zero. Uh, and the same can be said about their uh, revenue sources and taxes. So municipalities and local government uh, don't have the necessary tools. We can do more, but we need those tools. Of course, we uh, talk about this with the Ministry of Transport and other ministries, and the Ministry of Transport has been saying that uh, about at least 5% of uh, road maintenance programs should be devoted to sustainable uh, transport. Well, we don't want to be talking about gravel roads, but there are locations in Lithuania where people are not even talking about electrical vehicles because they live uh, with dust roads. Well, we all live in our own bubbles. We try to solve uh, our own problems. But uh, we shouldn't forget that there are other problems and um, even bigger bubbles of problems. The minister. Yes, our direction is clear. And the fact is that uh, uh, we know we are going and uh, we'll get there sooner or later. If we look at uh, towns in Lithuania, about 55% of all trips are by car. There are slight differences, but the average is this. So the aim is clear. All ministers, ministries should talk to each other, and we should aim uh, to reduce the number of tricks by 15% by 2030. And this is not should not be a forced goal. We need to offer alternatives. Well, one of the way, ways would be to increase uh, trips on foot just slightly. I think it is a cultural question. We should also increase uh, public transport uh, capacity by 5%. Uh, well, to give uh, an example from Vilnius, if we introduce a new route, uh, the use increases uh, significantly. 
And if we increase the number of uh, public transport lanes, the uh, speed also increases. And then other, other uh, um, engine-free uh, vehicles are also important, uh, bicycles and um, other things. But uh, this is also related to certain problems. For example, I don't have a space where to keep my bicycle. Now I can park my bicycle at my office. In my previous job, I didn't have this opportunity. So we need uh, a little bit of more efforts. Uh, we can also speak about uh, gravel roads and we could uh, um, in, uh, achieve the situation where there are no gravel roads left in Lithuania by 2035. We can move in this direction, we could give more independence to municipalities and we could achieve our uh, goals uh, faster. Well, a few words to municipalities. Among the tools that are lacking and that were mentioned by uh, the president of the Association of Local Authorities is competences and institutional capacities. We can't criticize municipalities. The municipalities might have a very active mayor or an, a very active architect, but uh, um, municipal politicians, local politicians and municipal staff lack competences and capacities. And the, the mechanisms to adopt decisions and uh, implement them are very clumsy. Uh, for example, the mayor might um, give a task to a certain division, that division uh, carries out public procurement, and then the result is very small. Another thing is uh, legislation. Well, we spoke about parking standards, um, planning documents, uh, street standards. It is not the fault of uh, municipalities that they are forced to carry out public procurement based on those documents. Uh, our regulatory system is not very favorable for sustainable transport. Well, for example, we participated uh, in a project in Vilnius and we were not able to implement our project because of the uh, building standards, street building standards in Vilnius. Well, it, so it wouldn't be right to criticize only people and municipalities. And my one last remark. What is mobility? It is not a bicycle path. It is not an electrical bus. It is not a railway. Mobility means the possibility to choose. And the minister mentioned that. And people are mobile when they are able to choose from at least three alternatives that are beneficial from the point of view time and cost and comfort. If we uh, set up one additional uh, bus line to a suburb at nine o'clock in the evening, or if we build a new bicycle path, this doesn't mean that we ensure mobility. Mr. Lassi, please. The next step that the OECD will take in Lithuania is to have a um, uh, sectored uh, approach, uh, trying to align uh, sectors, different sectors to the carbon neutrality goals. And we will have uh, several interactions with the stakeholders. In this transportation sector, there are specific stakeholders that we need to address. Those who are bringing second-hand vehicles, car dealers, those do, who are, for example, giving the plates to those second-hand vehicles in Lithuania. No, because this is an important regulation that you have to address. For example, in some countries, you cannot uh, give a plate to a second car if the car is not produced, at least in your country. But if you are not producing cars, okay, you have to select the age of the car, the technology or the fuel of the car to provide a plate. No? Those who are, for example, 
uh, in the business of electromobility. Yesterday I saw a lot of uh, trottinets, well, uh, scooters and, and bicycles that, are, that you can rent you know, for one hour, two hours. Why, why, why you don't have uh, vehicles, you know, cars, individual cars, here in the city or in the rural areas? What are the incentives they need, those uh, business or corporation people, uh, they need to provide these kind of alternatives so those that need that uh, accessibility, no? the, 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 the choice of having a, a car that you can rent in the next corner. No? Uh, those that are also uh, providing the fuel, no? the gas stations. Why in the gas station you can find easily diesel fuel? No, you have to restrain, You have to uh, reduce the, the 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 distribution of diesel. No, so you have to involve all the stakeholders, and the stakeholders have names, they have businesses, they pay taxes also. No, and they are part of the society and they have to take responsibility in the transformation of the sector. And that, that will be the next step with, with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Skrodianis. Well, when we speak about uh, mobility, uh, we often say that we don't need any more roads, we don't need uh, to asphalt anything. But I believe that there should be a quality. We need to speak about uh, distribution of uh, infrastructure. Uh, when I look at, uh, when I compare Lithuania with the Netherlands and Denmark, I see that uh, we don't have uh, normal network planning. All towns have uh, separate, uh, several types of lanes, for example, the acceleration lanes, uh, public transport lanes, and the usual lanes. Uh, but we simply have turns uh, where vehicles are able to enter uh, from a side road. So um, as long as we don't have uh, the proper distribution of lanes on our streets, we can't speak about sustainable mobility. When it comes to regulation, uh, our regulations, our building documents uh, were drawn up on the basis of a German example from 1970s. So now the situation is chaotic. We are no longer looking at what uh, the Germans are doing. We are looking at New York, other cities and chaos prevails and we are unable to manage the process. So we need to go back to those regulatory documents. For example, I, uh, at one point I contributed to drawing up legislation and uh, I saw the Swedish example. Every situation is unique. We need to look at uh, some basic scenarios and we need to have uh, qualified planners. Another thing, we have a lot of uh, documents. We speak about humanization, we speak about shared space, but it would be impossible to implement uh, in Lithuania for, because if we have an accident, the police would start uh, looking for people who are guilty, who uh, allowed others to use this shared space. And then when it comes to infrastructure and gravel roads, I often ask myself the following. Well, we speak about cars, we speak about level five, but we are the country that has the most gravel roads. And not to forget the Utana, uh, road. Well, so I believe that we should speak about uh, some basic respect for people, but maybe our roads should be narrower, maybe we should give up on certain roads. 
But I can see that there's a lack of consistent planning. Well, the minister said that uh, they have a transport strategy uh, until 2035. This is really needed. We need to understand what uh, sustainable mobility is, what our plans are, and we should also take into account the aspects mentioned by Christina. Yes, we also heard about uh, the chaos in our country. You mentioned this once again, we, you illustrated this with specific uh, examples. And now the minister. Well, our team is working and reviewing the technical documents. Well, we know that the Germans have new documents, we're 20 years behind, but I hope uh, to present um, new documents for public consultations and uh, coordination. We don't think that we should uh, uh, provide public finding uh, if somebody wants to have a wider street just because they want to. Yes, it is difficult to speak about uh, greening, um, but I believe that we will take the necessary steps. We still have some time for questions from the audience. I'm Kasparas Adomaitis. I have a question to Mendoga Sinkiewicz. Um, we are talking about uh, proposals, certain proposals uh, from the ministry. We are talking about infrastructure taxes. Vilnius has already introduced an infrastructure tax, and this is a sign of independence of this municipality. Why are small municipalities unwilling to introduce this fact? What are the obstacles? Well, I think everyone understands the reasons why they don't introduce. Look at those ring municipalities. What does it mean to take a construction uh, permit and to build a house where there is no infrastructure? And quite another thing is uh, when you take a construction permit in Yonava, where uh, the price for one square meter is 50 euros already involving taxes. So, what is your choice? To pay taxes in Vilnius region? Okay, then we have the issue of land and, uh, um, and uh, the price of land, but uh, that explains why ring municipalities are interested in uh, promoting development uh, in their locations. There, well, I know Konas region best, and uh, in Konas region, we are not discussing the possibility of not using or, or rather not, not using the possibilities but actually uh, we are talking about uh, making different locations more attractive and competitive but so we are looking uh, at uh, this issue through competition. Of course, uh, well, uh, wastewater systems and, uh, and uh, uh, water supplies and uh, other utility systems, uh, their uh, building uh, is uh, costly. And of course, it is much easier when you then when the infrastructure is already there. And uh, let's uh, be open and frank in Yonova or any other municipality which introduced the, the infrastructure tax, every tax that is introduced uh, is met with resistance from population. And we were even uh, we were even blamed as being uh, crazy or trying to benefit uh, from uh, all these uh, taxes. So there is a, a huge lack of trust that the uh, collected uh, tax revenue will be used for further development of the infrastructure. So the, this kind of mood really is detrimental and uh, often creates uh, creates uh, obstacles and unwillingness uh, to adopt uh, uh, tax-related decisions. I don't know if I answered your question, uh, but uh, I guess uh, 
Uh, we need to be more imperative. Of course, we we, we can introduce uh, taxes, we can introduce uh, levies, uh, and I don't know. Oh, well, actually, uh, it, it, it was news for me about Vilnius region, but I think that uh, it reveals the logic. Uh, we just heard an example how differently we understand the law and uh, the need for law. Uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but the infrastructure law is not uh, uh, to introduce introduction or competition among different regions. The infrastructure law uh, is meant for the people who would invest uh, uh, in, uh, in the development of infrastructure so that people by paying uh, these uh, infrastructure tax know that they are investing into a building of infrastructure. Kona's uh, region is growing and it will continue to grow that and the infrastructure uh, issue is very important for it. So that and this is a very good example that uh, even a good idea could be misunderstood and uh, devolved uh, through miscommunication. Well, first, I think we need to agree among themselves. If we want to address uh, the transport issues, we need to actually mobilize uh, the critical mass of uh, population who would uh, agree to invest into better quality of life. So this is a very good example that we are viewing the same laws in a different way. Yes, I will continue by saying that uh, this law is not is functioning in a very strange way, because it seems that uh, somebody is investing uh, uh, into infrastructure. But if some if a business is uh, building uh, uh, something for its purpose, then it has to invest. But let's leave this issue aside. Let's put it aside. Let's leave uh, Vilnius. Let's put uh, Vilnius as, aside. Uh, let's talk about planes. A plane limit, uh, related emissions and the increasing uh, number of planes. And what are the plans for the future? No, we are not uh, demolishing uh, the airports, uh, uh, but of course, everyone sees the need of renovation. Uh, talking about flights, um, let's be frank. Well, uh, well, uh, accessibility to Lithuania is best assured by uh, by air. Uh, flights ensure. Uh, tourist flows and uh, business flows and so on and so forth. So after pan after the pandemics, uh, our number one goal is to bring uh, back the number of flights uh, to the previous or pre-pandemic levels. And once we achieve that, uh, I hope and I'm sure that uh, by that time uh, we will have developed uh, a model uh, of uh, the most important uh, 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 transportation hubs where we have to ensure connections. Now we are subsidizing, uh, for example, certain flights, uh, flights uh, to uh, London City Airport, for example. So we are now currently using a model that is used by the EU to the remote islands. And geographically, we are in the periphery. And uh, for some, for, for, the, uh, for the air companies, we are not a priority. Therefore, the question is, what model can we offer uh, so that we ensure the uh, connection with the major transportation hubs? Well, uh, Vilnius Airport uh, was servicing about 5.5 million uh, passengers and uh, capacity is not sufficient and therefore we need to invest into, into developing the infrastructure. The same goes for Konas Airport and regarding uh, the Palanga Airport, uh, uh, we also have plans uh, uh, of expansion for Palanga Airport too. 
Uh, so uh, there is a huge potential, but we need to inv invest in order uh, to be able to use the potential. I think that in the near future, uh, one thing will, uh, will happen. It is likely that the European Union will, in will introduce a ban of uh, 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 short distance flights. I think uh, they can be replaced by Rail Baltica uh, train service, but I don't imagine uh, traveling longer distances uh, by trains or the other means of transport. Well, there was an informal meeting of transport ministers last week, and we talked about uh, the uh, about alternative fuels, about the same issues that we are touching up upon today. But there is still that we don't have uh, technological solutions. Well, I understood that Mr. Pransketis was referring to reducing the the pollution related to to, to travel by air, and the minister was right by saying uh, that uh, uh, the uh, air companies or the uh, air companies were included uh, into polluter place uh, pace uh, model and i also agree that we will continue continue using uh, airplane services but uh, i think that uh, the methods or the ways or the model will be changed but when we are talking about alternatives to vehicles and if uh, alternatives uh, uh, will be introduced uh, in in the long in in the long term perspective but in the short term uh, perspective we need to have a look at what the vehicles we are using today a statistical lithuania lithuanian is changing or replacing a car uh, every four or five years. Therefore, we need to provide incentives uh, to choose a better uh, and less polluting uh, uh, car. But this is uh, where we need uh, to introduce uh, incentives even uh, for those that are most economically vulnerable. And uh, we need to provide the possibility to make a better choice uh, of uh, less polluting uh, uh, transport means. Uh, yes, we need to think about to, to think about the long term perspective, but today is also important. Any other questions from the audience? If there are no questions, we can actually summarize the, the discussion, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, you could uh, say some words, uh, concluding words, uh, from your own points of, points of view. So how can we manage uh, the chaos, Mr. Skrodans? As I said, uh, we first of all need to identify the problems that we are addressing. We shouldn't address the problems uh, that are coming uh, from, perifer uh, from peripheral uh, areas, so to speak. Um, or not, that are not important. Uh, we need to make a decision. Do we want to have uh, a good uh, uh, public transport uh, um, fleet or do we want to work with individual municipal bus companies? And uh, the question is, uh, do they have a future? Are they capable of buying new, uh, less polluting buses? So, when addressing the main problem, we usually tend to, to also uh, address uh, uh, auxiliary problems. And uh, we didn't touch upon during this discussion about the digitalization and uh, uh, using uh, more advanced uh, technologies uh, in uh, the system of uh, transport. When, for example, Mm. Uh, digitalization will make redundant uh, certain mm, 
vehicles, if I may say so. So we need to, to make an inventory of what is going on in Lithuania in the area of uh, ticketing uh, in on the buses and also uh, the, uh, and, and uh, the possibilities of uh, traveling uh, um, around uh, uh, Lithuania, at least around Lithuania, by using just one single ticket. In Finland, for example, they are already talking about a single ticket for, for, for traveling to Europe. And then again, we always complain that uh, there is, we need money, there is a lack of funds. But uh, I think that uh, there are ways of uh, raising these funds by saving uh, uh, the, in, 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 and making rational decisions. So, in a nutshell, we need to actually identify the problems uh, and then uh, think about uh, what kind of funds do we need, who will have responsibility, and uh, this responsibility have to be very clearly delineated, not scattered uh, among different institutions. Right, so Mr. Sienkiewicz, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, I have Sorry. to say that uh, if we are able to finish the Paris Agreement rule book in Glasgow in November, the transportation sector will have uh, new challenges, specifically because uh, in the carbon uh, neutrality or in the climate neutrality future, the transport section sector uh, will have remaining emissions and you will have to offset those emissions with removals. Um, this is another part of the equation for the near future. Um, that means that uh, you have to look uh, uh, at the other uh, sectors inside the transportation sector as airplanes. You know, the, the, the Corsia system, for example, will be uh, one of the options. But in the maritime uh, uh, subsector, we also have or we will be uh, facing uh, um, emissions that we need to reduce or we need to uh, balance. Uh, in, the, in the public uh, sector, but also in the interregional uh, movements, uh, we also have to have a, a removal scheme or mechanism. And these, these are the, the, the next uh, uh, generation of uh, measures that you have to ambition. And it's, uh, it's uh, a pending uh, agenda uh, in your climate, uh, of course, commitments. I think that uh, uh, the things that you are doing right now is uh, going in the, in the good direction, but you will need to increase and expand the decisions that you are taking in the fiscal reform, but also and, and also in the regulation reform. Thank you. Minister Prasho. Well, talking about the complex uh, problems, if you ask me what the the what would be the one solution that would help to solve everything so i would say that this is education and i would like to thank the oecd team for um, highlighting uh, all the priorities but on the other from on the other hand from our side we also have uh, our priorities and uh, uh, the, the public transport is clearly in our focus we are making effort to uh, expand uh, the electrical vehicle charging station network and we are also investing into bicycle routes and and the like and talking about uh, education and competences of municipalities and businesses well on these topics at least if i remember correctly uh, two years ago, these topics were not discussed at all. We discussed energy, but not these issues. So now we are having a consensus, and uh, it is also very clear that uh, Lithuania has a lot of work to do in the future. Yes, uh, 
I would like to summarize this discussion by saying that uh, the review is a very valuable document and what we need most is a, a yearly or annual monitoring. Because, uh, well, to my opinion, the review reflects uh, our present phase. But now we need uh, to have a look at uh, what conclusions do we make uh, after this review and what uh, we will achieve uh, in one year. Okay, we are talking about the long term perspective 2030, 2050. Maybe uh, we are not on this earth anymore. So we need to think now and here. So therefore, it is my opinion that uh, monitoring is uh, important. And, uh, but I think uh, we have uh, uh, a consensus uh, on the disease uh, that we are suffering from. Uh, the only thing that we need to do is uh, to find the treatment. Perhaps uh, it will take a surgical operation, a painful surgical operation. Perhaps this operation will leave scars. But all of us, we will have uh, to do our bit. Uh, and in the association of municipalities, in the ministries, in the parliament. But I, I, I can see that uh, we have a similar view uh, towards these problems, and perhaps in a year we will meet here, all alive and healthy, and we will have another discussion on how did we do. For me, the OECD uh, review and uh, this discussion uh, is a demonstration uh, how important it is to have a, a broad overview of the situation. And I think that every one of us uh, now can take away a message uh, that we need to, to have a consensus uh, on the status quo, on the concepts. Perhaps uh, we not always agree on the directions that we are taking, but uh, one thing is clear, we need uh, more pace. Emissions are growing and we need to, to curb those emissions, to cap those emissions and achieve their reduction. Let's stop talking about what is first, subsidies to electrical vehicles or uh, taxes on roads or the development of uh, public transport infrastructure. It doesn't important. I think everything has to be done in parallel. Well, a similar discussion took place uh, two years ago, uh, and we were consider uh, we were deliberating climate change plan, and uh, I said one phrase uh, that was uh, as follows: the compromise is the worst strategy. Therefore. My wish uh, to the decision makers is not to, don't start the competition among uh, different objectives. We want to be a welfare state, we want to protect the environment, we want to curb uh, emissions, but indeed it doesn't help to achieve a substantial results. In certain discussions, we can uh, compromises are not allowed. We need just uh, to stamp our feet and say, from now on, we are taxing this and that. From now on, uh, we will uh, um, put all the efforts on education and so on. So another wish uh, for the decision makers, uh, indeed the recommendations uh, in, that are presented in the review are very good. And um, uh, I'm very glad uh, that uh, the outsider's view in the form of this review is the same as ours. And uh, very good that there are people who, who uh, offer uh, annual um, monitoring. So, but my wish uh, to the decision makers is to think about every one of us, about an old person and uh, a newborn baby, about those who are using cars or, 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 or scooters, 
but just don't forget that every member of society has a certain particular or peculiar needs not necessarily because they have a disability but because simply they have different needs they have infants they have children they have elderly family members and so on and so forth a lot has been done but don't forget uh, the human every single human well thank you very much uh, uh, to Kristina Mindaugas uh, Gintare uh, Maris uh, and uh, Mr. Rodolfo uh, from OECD and Egidius Kradanis so thank you very much for participating in this discussion goodbye